Hello, thank you for watching this video. This is a devlog where I'm programming using JavaScript 2D and I've made, let's get it running here, I'm using the, what editor am I using? Like Sublime or something like that. No, brackets, brackets I'm using. So, um, inspired by the CoPen challenge every week, they've just started a new one, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, the first week they've ever done was based on arcade games. So I made this little game um, called like, inspired by Pac-Man, obviously. This is called Infinite Pac-Man. Um, if we go commercial with it, <laughs> which we almost certainly won't do, we'll always keep it open source, but um, if we go commercial with it, then um, obviously I think Namco own Pac-Man, so we'll have to change the design of it. Um, but basically what I want to do in this devlog video, I don't know how many I'll make or whether I'll finish this one, um, but I just wanted to add a power-up because a key feature of the original Pac-Man arcade game, which is wonderful, is to be able to chase the ghosts after you eat one of the larger pellets. So it's kind of like a power-up. At the moment, let me just explain how this game works so far. Basically, you can go left or right as, as uh, infinitely because I've got infinite perle uh, Perlin terrain here. Um, and... Um, eat, uh, every time you eat a pellet, that gives you one life, and then every time you get hit by one of the ghosts, then you lose ten life. And as you, I'm gonna change direction, double back. As you, I'm gonna use the. I was using the mouse. You can use the mouse to kind of uh, swipe, so it'll work on a touch screen as well. I'll put a link to <laughs> to this game so you can play it. Um, it is it is on CodePen, but I'll also I've also put it on a GitHub page so that you can play it. Um, full 60 frames per second and I don't know, it's just a bit nicer and it will always, if I update it, it will be updated a lot quicker on my GitHub pages than on CodePen so I have to refactor some of the code and, and, and that kind of thing Right, um, what was I saying? Um, so as you eat pellets you'll see at the top of the screen the um, health bar goes up um, also if you die it's set back to 32 so you've got some kind of chance of of going. Every time you get hit, by the way, and it and your life goes down to zero, I turn on the rotation of our little main character, um, and then I play like a little game over jingle. Um, so I also, another thing I might make if, I don't know, put in the comments if you'd like to see this in another video, another thing to continue with is kind of having a bit more of a game over kind of feel before you start the next game, although what works well with like a game like Flappy Bird is that you can get started again, you can start the game very, very quickly. And so I've kind of got that now, so I just lost there, so my life is back to 32. But I don't know, I need to make the ghost disappear for a bit longer, or, or I don't know, or uh, maybe have some text saying game over or something like that. Anyway, so in this, um, in this devlog, what we want to do is have a larger pellet maybe have it a shiny colour, which would be cool. And then, I am just thinking out loud here, and then when we eat it, um, we want the ghosts to all turn blue. And when we, when we uh, maybe collide with a ghost, they get eaten. And obviously that will only happen for a certain amount of time. And maybe even have a little um, sound jingle when you eat the power up. At the moment, I don't know if you can hear it very well, but I've had to put the sound down so the music's not too loud, but every time you eat a pellet, you get like a nice little um, squeaky beep kind of, kind of um, sound effect. Right, so that's enough introduction. Here's our project. So I've got the infinite pacman.js. This is the main JavaScript file. Um, we've got the gstalk terrain, that looks after the Perl in infinite terrain. Um, basically, what, what how that works is, um, we're going to Perl in terrain, but um, there's only a set amount of, I call them like stalks or slices of the terrain, and as you move right and left, the end stalk over here gets moved over there and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, GB object is where we have our main Pac-Man sprite, and then the Antbot class. Um, this is a class, I always make these particular characters in my um, demos and things, um, and I've just extended from this class to create a Blinky class. 
And that's the, the red ghosts um, in that little game. So we want to be doing some work with this class. Straight away, I can think we need to have um, two images. This image, um, we'll call it S for scared. Um, and that will equal image, uh, image S. There we go. Um, right, so when we create our blinkies, then in the main file, we can then pass in another parameter, and that parameter will hold, or that argument will hold the second image of uh, our ghost when it looks blue, and we'll store that in this uh, member variable here. Um, so I'm just going to put some comments so I can remember in the future what on earth is going on. I've just written the word comments again. I've done that in another video. Weird. Um, so our textures, and I'll just call this scared, and then uh, normal. And then, of course, we want a variable, um, a boolean variable, um, which I don't have to <laughs> specify in JavaScript. We want to know whether I'm scared or not. So scared equals false. So default will be false. Um, and we'll just leave a comment. It's a good idea to leave a comment with what, is my type big enough? I'll make it a bit bigger, there we go with what uh, your code is doing, or like the, the reason for a particular piece of code. It's really useful when you come back later to look at your code to have a comment that says, well, why do I need this variable here? So I need this variable because um, uh, let us know how to draw a uh, blinky. So in the render function, um, or member method. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using push and pop, which are P5 functions. So I am using JavaScript, but I'm using a rendering and graphics animation and input output um, library called P5.js. Um, I'll hopefully remember to put a link to the processing.org website which is this open source, free, brilliant um, organization, um, which develops processing and p5.js to make um, coding um, a lot more accessible, a lot quicker. So, um, so I'm using some of these functions are p5 functions. So we've got push, which saves the current matrix, translate, um, creates a new like origin for where we're drawing. And so we want that origin to be the center of our, each ghost and then we can rotate him um, and then paint which image we want. So here I'm saying this image. Um, but remember now we've got this image S for the scared image. So we could say, we could, we could put a temporary variable in here, which image, and we could say, um, let which image equal, so I'm not on separate lines here, let which image equal um, this image. So that's going to be the default. Most of the time the ghost is going to be in its habitual familiar um, texture. And then um, we want to ask a question though, if this scared, if it's scared, um, which image equals this image S. There we go. So that makes sense. So now which image will hold the correct image? Right, so um, we've got to go and load this in the main file. Whoops, so in um, Infinite Pac-Man, what we do at the start of the program, we've got a preload function, which before we go down to setup, which is the start of the program, um, the browser makes sure we've loaded all of these assets. So at the moment, I've just got some music and sound effects 
Um, but we've also got one image. So I want to say something like um, um, image blinky s equals um, blinky s png. Right, so we need to go and get um, that actual image. Um, so I'm just using open source, and um, this is not commercial, so we can we can choose um, someone else's work um, as long as we change it and um, give them credit um, if we do go commercial and we've got an appropriate license, like public, open source, uh, public domain, that's what I mean to say. Um, Right, I think this is kind of the thing we're looking for. I kind of like the, the pixel pixelated um, effect, and we've got alpha. Okay, so this is what we kind of want, and it's by Stickaz, all decals. So, again, this is just open source, public domain -y kind of stuff, um, but if we wanted to go commercial or something like that, then we'd have to um, credit Stickaz and make sure that it is public domain. It might not be. I might just visit it quickly wall decals so no this doesn't look very <laughs> this doesn't look very um open sourcing okay so stick has <laughs> i'm very sorry i'm going to borrow this for just this educational um use right um let's just go back here oh by it's by a small green bug by a small green bug. Let's just quickly go to a small green bug. Have they got a website? Yes, they do. That's cool. They've got loads of cool stuff. So because we're going to use their work for, for our educational non-profit thing, um, but do check out their work because, or, or at least give them some credit. Right. Um, how do I go back? What's go what is going on? There we go. I'll close that tab. All right, here's, I'll just save him. Uh, save as Blinky S in Infinite Pac-Man. Oh, we're in the right place, brilliant. Where's Blinky? Blinky two, there we go, save. No, Blinky, <laughs> it's supposed to be Blinky S. I'll have to open up that folder. Where are we? Infinite Pac-Man, Blinky two. I've just noticed this is lowercase as well, and I'm sure I wrote it uppercase. It's gonna be slightly smaller, that's okay. That kind of work with our aesthetic. Like he's got smaller because he's got scared. Um, yeah, that's supposed to be lowercase. Um, so it can't, we were okay, but that might cause problems um, if we were loading up from CodePen or something, i.e. off a website. Keep that in mind. Right. Um, ah, so we've got our image. Oh, I was just going to show you the CodePen challenges. So if you just go to CodePen or put in CodePen challenges, um, every week they will have a new challenge uh, for you to put some together um, on their browser-based website, and uh, you might get featured if you use the right tag and things. So it's the second week, and I think they've just gone into Donkey Kong. Yeah. So. Um, I think I'm definitely going to have a go at this. I've never made anything. I've no, not really played Donkey Kong, so I don't know. Creating a monkey. Um, there's a princess, of course. And it, was this the first kind of like um, a version of Mario or something? Okay. The origins of Mario? I don't know. Right. Um, so we've loaded our Blinky Scared. So now we want to be able to test that, actually. Let's just see. If I can press, say, the space bar, and it makes all of our blinkies, our ghosts, become um, become scared. So the first thing is, this piece of code, where I'm pushing a new blinky, so that was just to go back to the class. So, uh, yeah. Here are our, oh no, sorry. The bottom of this file. Right, here's our class of Blinkies. So this is an ES6 class in JavaScript. 
and it's inherited from or extends from my, my AMP bot um, object. And in order to construct one or initialize one, you need to pass in two image um, arguments now. And as it exists, I'm only, only putting in one at the end. So if I remember correctly, this is image blinky s. There we go, which I've loaded at the in the preload function at the top. So now we've passed in to all of the blinkies that we make, and here I've got a for loop where I'm making ten blinkies, and all ten of them are now given that scared image, and they'll be scaled up through through the code which we've already done. Okay, so now. And I, I, we've already made that boolean um, scared, false or true, so we can just um, change that very easily. If we go to our draw loop, which is like the game loop, here we go, the update loop, I can say something like, um, if key, oh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know the, the code, if on key down, Event handle the key down on the window. This is vanilla JavaScript. On key down. Just have to tell it what key. No parameters there. Key code. Can I just put space in there? I have no idea. This is embarrassing. This is too embarrassing to keep in the video. Um, on key down, key space. And then we can say um, blinkies uh, zero um, scared equals true. Right. Uh, hopefully this will kick up an error straight away because I've never used that on key down before. Yeah, <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> okay. Um, I need to refer to one of my other code. Uh, let's go here. Right. So hopefully I've got some controls. A control method um, in in this um, antbot class, so I'll be able to find how to move around, uh, steer. But I might handle this somewhere else. I'm pretty sure though I've done it in here. So this is how to draw him. Maybe it's in the brain object. Oh, here we go. If key is down, left arrow. Okay. If key is down, space. Key is and space. I think that's how we do it. Right. So key is down is a P5. Uh, Keyword. Oh. So either I've done something wrong again there or there's a different uh, problem. Key is down is not defined. Oh. I'm sure that was fine. Um, have I saved? Maybe I didn't save it. That could be a problem. I've changed something and I haven't saved the code. But it was reporting key is down actually. Yep, it's not working there. Um, right, I've probably just written it slightly wrongly. Key is down. Oh yes, 
lowercase. Did I write lowercase or capital? Yep, I've written a capital. So lowercase. Hopefully now we can <laughs> test our code so far. No. <laughs> What's going on here? 224 again. Space is not defined. Oh, God. Um, space bar? No, that won't be. I def I've definitely used space bar in um, another place. It could be the whole word. Right, so where I'm looking now is my Red Hen 2D, 2D Physics, which um, I've written a utility class for. Um, here we go, key is down 80. <laughs> key is down 71, that's a space bar then. To, no, G, space bar to go to space, so it's 32. Okay. <laughs> ah, right. So let's put 32 in there, and hopefully we can begin, <laughs> begin to debug. Oh, I didn't see when the beginning of this video was. Right, okay. So what we're interested in is our blinky. So get them on screen and then press space. Oh yes, and it's the littlest one has gone blue. <laughs> let's just reload. And hopefully it'll be a little bit bigger this time so we can see a more dramatic change. There we go. That's awesome. It does look, looks a little flat, I must say. Anyway, that's okay. Um, I can fine tune things later on. So it looks a little flat. Um, we'll just comment that out now. So this time what we want to happen is when, when we a special kind of pellet, we want our our blinkies to get scared and for a certain amount of time. First, let's see if we can lay down a new kind of pellet. So in the um, G-Stalk Terrain class, I'm placing down one of those pellets if um, there is a slot above that terrain piece available. Um, once you've once I've placed a an object there, the slot gets filled, and when it's eaten, the slot isn't um, isn't um, nullified again. It isn't emptied, um, just so that we get the effect of if we go back over to some old terrain, then um, and you've eaten some pellets there, the pellets won't suddenly reappear again. Um, so it kind of like saves, um, a mu it gives the idea of a much larger real kind of like world. Anyway, um, basically we want to say if there is a space and something like every 100 spaces we can create, um, or randomly maybe, let's just say we're going to put down a pellet and we'll choose a random number. If the random number is like, you know, within a certain percentage then drop a goodie. Um, another way to do it would be through Perlin noise or some hard-coded amount so that you're kind of spacing out the pellets. So this, this is the kind of question you want to answer for balancing the game and what seems to be most enjoyable. I think at the moment just to test things but also in terms of fun we could have like a random number um, which would be cool and then sometimes you would get randomly a few of these like super pellets um, spawning close together, which are kind of exciting. Right, um, place object, here we are, sorry, I remember that, line 380. So what's basically happening here is when we move left or right and we're moving one of these stalks of the terrain into place, at that point we ask the question, or we, we call place object. And the first thing we ask is, um, is this slot null? Is it empty? If it is, then we can go and do the rest of the um, um, 
function. We can go and place one down. And so the rest of that function was just placing an object down. Um, so we're then asking the question, is it at a certain height? So I said only place pellets when we're at a certain height. Um, so it's going to be a circle. What I could do, very similar to what we did with the image thing, we uh, I could have some temporary variables here. So for instance, this is the size of the little circle object that I'm going to place, which is a pellet. So I could say um, pellet size. And at the moment there, or by default, they're going to be 12, I think it was. So let pellet size equal 12. Um, so now we'll have a little random event. We'll say um, let um, power up equal math dot random. So math dot random gives you back um, a floating point number between zero and one. And so you want to scale that up or I don't actually have to scale it up, do I? I want to say let power up equal math random and then I can say um, or let's just say that's chance. Let chance equal that. And then I can say if chance is less than 0 0.2, um, then we'll say um, power, uh, then we'll say power up equals true. Okay, so again, we need to make um, a Boolean variable for power up, power up, and by default, false. Okay, <laughs> false. Okay, um, oh, we also want to do some other things. So I'll need some curly br braces here to make sure that our if statement, if true, if um, okayed, then it changes these other things as well. So we also want um, the label, so I'll call it p label equals um, eat me. Okay, eat me, an eat me pellet. So also we're setting the label of this object down here. And as I've written in my good comments here, label for collisions. So in the infinite Pac-Man um, JavaScript file, I've got a, a collision function that looks at all the collisions that happen between uh, the physical bodies. By the way, the physics is all controlled by Liam Brumit's matter.js. Um, library, which is fantastic, very efficient, as you've seen. We've got 60 frames per second, and quite a lot was going on. Um, so what you can do is add a label to those bodies, and then if two collide, we can look at their labels and then decide what to do. So that's the system I'm using to, to organize my collisions. And at the moment, we've got every pellet that's laid down labeled to pellet, and then I say, if a Pac-Man hits a pellet, then the pellet goes away and Pac-Man's health goes up. Simple as that. So now we want to change this to P label and it, that will either resolve to um, eat me or by default it's going to be um, pellet. There we go. Let P label equal eat me. There we go. Now we've got all these temporary variables. I'm even doing like a random chance thing here. And this is going to have to happen every time we place down a new object, actually. So this is kind of me hard coding things in just kind of, what would you call that? Kind of just hacking it for a specific solution. Um, 
obviously this is not the best thing to do, i.e. making new variables every time you want this to happen and randomizing it. Doing this little random function, calling this a random function, takes a little bit of time. So you kind of want to do that at the start when everything's loading up in some way. Um, and then save these different variables in it permanently for your character. Anyway, we'll op we can optimize and refactor later on. So, right, we've got everything set up. If, if we're lucky, if the chance is low enough, then our power up will be set to true and our P label will be eat me and pellet size will have to go up. This is exciting, so we can actually see it. Oh, we'll also want to change the color, don't we? So, um, pellet size equals, let's just make it twice as big. So it looks, um, so, so it's clearly big enough. Right. Um, and then the color of the pellet. We'll keep the same color at the moment. I'm just eager to get it working at the moment. Okay, so that should be fine. Let's, let's run. And if this goes okay, we get a few pellets appearing. That's a satisfying phrase to say. If we get a few pellets appearing, then... Oh, there's one already. I'm already quite excited. Um... <laughs> I can't eat them anymore. Interesting. I can't eat... Ah, I shouldn't be able to eat the larger ones because, precisely because they are not pellet. They're not labelled as a pellet. What's strange is that now I can't eat the other pellets, meaning I've mislabeled them somehow. But there we go. I don't think they're spaced enough, so we can kind of reduce this chance. I don't know, less than 0.1. Okay. Oh, well done if you spotted that. I didn't change that back to eat me. Okay. So very, very quickly, let's just see if we can eat our ordinary pellets and uh, kind of bounce off the main pellets. Also, it should be spaced a bit more. Okay, we're eating our pellets. Got lots of tiny little blinkies. And there's a big pellet. Yes, we can't eat him yet. I've got another one there. Okay, they're still spaced pretty close together. So that's okay for debugging at the moment. That's fine. So things are working as they're supposed to. So I've gone back to our infinite Pac-Man um, file and we'll now, now go and sort out the collision. Um, I think while I'm up here, okay, I wasn't that far up <laughs> the file, now I am. While I'm up here, um, near Blinkies, a global variables, I'm going to say let um, scared equal false. So blinkies are not, I put that in the wrong place. So our blinkies are not scared to begin with. Um, we we'll also need kind of a timestamp. So let Scared time uh, time stamp for scared. That makes sense. So once they get scared, once that's switched on, so once that collision happens between our Pac Man, I'll go this way, here's the board. So once that happens, he eats that larger superpower pellet, then we'll take a stamp of the time. And then um, if they're still supposed to be scared and then enough time elapses. Be interesting to see how long that lasts in the original Pac-Man. And then kind of match that for a nice, like, kind of authentic feel. That'd be good. Um, Pac-Man trivia. If you know how long that takes, put it in comments. I'll be happy to learn. So, um, let's go down to our collisions. So, where am I? My collisions. So this is my function that handles all the physics between the matter bodies, that Lee and Brunitz matter JS bodies. 
Um, I'm going to stop this video maybe in about 10 minutes time and then I think it'll be long enough for a devlog kind of video. Um, so let's get this working. Let's get these all the blinkies scared in 10 minutes, like a little challenge. Okay, so here's where we're basically looking at what are the labels of our different objects. So we want something very similar to this. So I'm going to copy and paste that. And um, install trying now. Right. Um, if pack eats um, a super pellet. So bod A, so body A, that refers to our little pack sprite, which I call Boo. And we want this label to be eat me. Okay, and then we want to close this little if. Uh, structure here. Right, so what do we want to do? We want to turn on scared mode. Um, take a timestamp and make sure all the blinkies are in scared mode. Okay, so first we scared we can say is true so that's happening we're in scared mode that doesn't actually do anything i don't know if we'll need that yet we want to take a timestamp so what was that called scared time equals and p5 has a little function called millis which will give you the milliseconds right now okay Here's a problem. This is a this is a callback, so this function won't actually run. I don't think it'd be really handy if it did. Um, so scared equals true. Let's use that. Let's play it safe. And here's our draw loop. And we'll say. If, you know what, I've got a function that looks after um, all of the blinkies. Where is it? Oh, I thought I did. I thought I had a function called like update blinkies or something like that. Maybe I don't have it anymore. Well, this is where the blinkies are being updated. There's update objects. In which case, what I was going to do, I was going to do it tidily in the blinkies um, function. Maybe I should make one and put it, and put all of this nonsense in there. I think I might do that now. Let's refactor some of this. So. Um, function update blinkies. I need that in there. And then I want to get hold of pellet sign. Oh yeah, I'm a bit switched. <laughs> Sorry, I get distracted. I had the pellets like bobbing up and down. It wasn't working for a reason. Now I've kind of worked out that reason. I might be able to get them bobbing again. Right, um, anyway, here are our blinkies. So let's grab that. And now we want to call update blinkies. So we're just tidying up our game loop there. So it's very clear now. We update the clouds, we update the terrain, or we render the terrain, we update our blinkies, we update all the objects. It's a lot easier to understand. Right, so this wants to go in here. Okay, so that should work. Right, I might test this in a moment because I made quite a big change. Okay, six minutes left, right. So I wanna say if scared, so if scared is true, then firstly, we want to take a timestamp Okay, which we've done there. Then we can say scared equals false. 
because we've kind of we've triggered it we've done everything we need to do so in here um, make sure all blinkies are in scared are scared I need to say are in scared mode it sounds too cruel if I just say they're scared are in scared mode um, we've got a function here which does which iterates over the blinkies. Let's use that. We could use a for each, but um, I hear the rumor is that for loops are faster so than for each. So again, in the comments, let me know if that isn't true or if you can confirm that it is true. That'd be helpful. Um, blinkies length. So we want to say um, blinkies I scared equals true okay now we need to know when the time is up so we need to say if this might be a little hacky this if um, the current time so millis um, minus our scared timestamp. Um, is more than, I don't know, 10 seconds seems quite long, let's say five seconds, something like that. I don't know if that, sorry, I don't know if 5,000 actually converts to, um, five seconds, I've forgotten what I'm doing here with the millis. Um, then, then we want to do the opposite. Make sure all blinkies are not in scared mode. Okay, um, I'm also tempted to say um, scared time equals zero because we only want to check this if scared time doesn't equal zero. So if scared time does not equal zero and Okay, so that should be, that should be fine. Um, so what we're asking, um, time to switch off scared mode. So that's kind of, this is only happening once. I was afraid if I didn't write that little bit, then obviously the, the new time is going to get higher and higher um, in the normal way, so it's going to get a lot more distance from the, the stamp we made for scare time. So this would be true over and over and over again, every single flame uh, frame. So you'd be having to run this loop over and over and over again, switching scared false to false, which is completely redundant. So we only want to check this and run through it if scare time equals zero, which is not going to be. Um, sorry, when it doesn't equal zero. So once we've switched them all off, so they're no longer scared, then we switch off scared time so this doesn't run again. Um, let's pretend that's happened. So scared time equals zero. Um, if scared, so that gets switched on with the collision. That's all we're doing in the collision. We're taking a, scared, uh, a time stamp. Scared equals false because we don't need to trigger this again. That's just running once. Okay, I'm happy with all that. Um, Turn on scared mode. There we go, right. Let's, it's quite exciting, let's try and run this. We've got one minute <laughs> to play with. If there are no bugs, then uh, we're there. Okay, brilliant. They all turned scared. 
and brilliant and they turned off after about five seconds let's see how long it was there is one bug of course in that the pellet doesn't disappear one two three four five i hit the other one so it's about six seconds maybe i don't know one one two three four that was about four so i don't know <laughs> take an average i counted to four counted to six so five seconds exactly um, so we've just got to make sure that our pellet gets removed when we eat it. That's brilliant. So that kind of works. Um, so where should we do that? We should probably do it in the collision where we do the other um, removal of a pellet. Okay, so the removal is a little tricky because of the uh, the the libraries that I'm using, the 2D physics library that I'm using. So in the, the update loop, in the draw loop, I've got a little true or false, um, a, bo a Boolean variable to remove. And basically, um, where is it? Uh, there we go. I'm storing Ah, uh, wait a minute, what am I doing? To remove equals to remove. Oh, if to remove doesn't equal not. So basically in the collision, I'm storing the object itself in to remove, um, or rather the object's ID number. And then I'm saying if that ID number matches up with the ID number of um, the body in the body array, the body meaning matter body, the 2D physics bodies. If those two IDs match up, it means we've got the right body because we loop through all of, we iterate over all of the bodies in the bods array, and then we remove that object, and then we break out of the, the loop. And then we make to remove null again, so that we pass over the to remove thing. So it's a little tricky, but that's what I'm having to do. Um, I'm also saying here, now I'm doing a d what I shouldn't be doing. This little structure should all should be about just removing a pellet. Um, but I'm also shrinking the Pac-Man and growing him if he gets enough points and giving him his points and things like that. So I could check the label again of the of the, the object to say whether I need to need to grow or not, things like that. Anyway, so that's just disorganized code really. Um, so I want to find, ah, here we go. So here we are back in the collision uh, function. Now, if we look at this uh, previous one where pack eats a pellet, um, we store to remove, or we, re we, we store bod B, i.e. the pellets label, or sorry, ID number, in to remove. So if we do that for our super pellet, then it will be removed in the function that I was just showing you. So final thing, three minutes over time there. I have no idea how long this total video is. Um, hopefully under an hour, surely under an hour. Let's just make sure things are working. So, I think seems to be fine. It does seem to be a lot slower now. Oh, maybe because I'm recording, maybe. But also because we've got that random function every time a pellet is put down. Oh, here's our first random pellet. Oh, brilliant, we ate it and they went blue. So clearly what I've got to add is and you know what, I won't, I won't make another one of these videos because I have no, no idea if anyone wanted to watch them. If you're interested in like programming and, and maybe Pac-Man, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you'd want to watch them. But I won't make another video about this little game that I'm making um, unless anyone requests it. So if anyone requests it, wants to know how I do the next thing and... Or indeed, if you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see in the game, leave a comment and I'll I'll do them and I'll make a new video. But 
Anyway, I just I just wanted to make these changes anyway, and I decided let's just make a dev video about it. So the what I was just going to say is when we eat him, obviously our ghosts want to have a different behaviour. They want to run away from. They want to flee our Pac-Man sprite. Um, also, they don't want to cause you damage, which they're currently still doing if you hit them. So that would be the next job. But we've got the important part of it done. But there we go. There's a little bit of programming for you, a little bit of development. Thank you very much for watching, and do enjoy playing the Pac-Man. You might be playing 20 years from now, and it might be um, still up there. <laughs> so you might be able to go and play on this. Um, so thanks very much. Enjoy.